I hope you've got your Lunchables and your carton of milk because we're going to school. All right, normally I'm not doing videos in front of a whiteboard, but honestly, I get asked a lot about estrogen. The relationship between estrogen and testosterone and how exactly it works. And to be completely honest, there's so much to cover when it comes to estrogen. I figured let's do this one a little bit more educational. So I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna talk about how exactly estrogen works within the body, what estrogen is, and how you can potentially reduce the bad kinds of estrogen. So first off, what does estrogen do, okay? Estrogen is predominantly a female hormone. So it's obviously helping with things like fertility. It's helping a woman get pregnant and different kinds of estrogens are gonna elevate depending on what time of the year it is, what time of the month it is, if a woman is pregnant or if a woman is not. Then additionally, we have to look at estrogen levels when it comes to men, okay? And estrogen plays a big part in our cholesterol levels. It balances out our good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. We don't always realize that it has such a strong correlation with that. So additionally, we look at mood. Estrogen can affect the mood. The fact is estrogen can balance out other hormones that sometimes affect our mood. It can also affect neurochemicals. It can affect serotonin. It can affect dopamine. All of which can change your mood state, can change your level of motivation, can change your level of irritability. All the more reason why we want to get those levels in check. And then of course, we've got libido maintenance. So when it comes to men, estrogen plays a huge role in the sex drive and in the libido. See, a lot of times men only want to associate testosterone with their libido when in reality, estrogen plays just as big of a role in terms of having that sexual desire or overall libido. Okay, so where is estrogen generally produced? All right, well, it's definitely more than generally produced in the ovaries in women. It's definitely not produced in the ovaries in men. And it's also produced in the fat, the testes, and the adrenals. Now, I'm going to get to that in a little bit more depth later in the video, but a lot of times there's different metabolites of estrogen that can flourish in different parts of the body. For example, bad metabolites of estrogen tend to flourish more in the fat. Now, then you have good metabolites of estrogen that flourish more in different areas of the body. Then you kind of have a neutral balance that tend to flourish in the adrenals. So you can see how different hormone functions throughout the course of the body can affect our estrogen production. Now, there's a few different kinds of estrogen. The most common one that's tested, the most common one that we know of, is estradiol. And estradiol is in both men and women, and it's essentially what's used for fertility. That's where it comes in place with women. And estradiol can be a byproduct of testosterone production when it comes to men. Okay, then we have estriol, which is a waste product of estrogen metabolism. Doesn't necessarily mean it's always bad, though, because that waste product can help tell our body how much estrogen we have at a certain point in time, which therefore regulates more testosterone and estrogen production. Then we have estrone, which is the weakest form of estrogen, definitely one of the more negative estrogen metabolites. That's the one that is present mostly in fat and a little bit in skeletal muscle tissue. Again, we need a little bit of it because it's going to keep things in balance. But let's talk about what happens when you have varying levels of estrogen in your body. You see, a lot of times people think they just have too much and they think that that's a problem because they're too high in estrogen. They automatically jump to conclusions because they feel like they're gaining weight, or they feel puffy, or they feel like they're moody. But in reality, having low levels of estrogen can do the exact same thing. And if you're malnourished, or if you're exercising too much, or if you're not eating enough in general, you can have too low of levels of estrogen, which can end up leading to a low libido and ultimately fat accumulation. See, it's a delicate balance that we have to keep track of, and this occurs in both men and women. Now, women in particular, if your estrogen levels are too low due to too much exercise or dieting or restricting certain nutrients, that can lead to a fertility issue. That can lead to messed up menstrual cycles. It can lead to all kinds of things you have to be cognizant of. But when we're talking about men, your lower sex drive may not have to do with testosterone. It actually may have more to do with estrogen. So don't just think that it's all negative all the time. Okay, so then we look at the good and the bad kinds of estrogen. And this is what I really wanted to talk about and how you can keep track of that. You see, when estrogen is broken down through aerobic metabolism, which is happening obviously with the presence of oxygen, then you have all kinds of metabolites, different things that break off from estrogen that have different reactions in the body. So for one, we wanna talk about 2-hydroxysterone. That's an antioxidant form of estrogen. That's essentially a good estrogen. That's one that is helping positive things in the body. It can help the mood. It can actually help muscle mass. It can actually help fat loss. It can help all kinds of things. Basically what it is is an estrogen antagonist. 
And the next one, we look at the bad metabolites of estrogen. Okay, we're looking in this case at 16-hydroxyestrone. Basically what that is, is an estrogen agonist. That is one that we want to eliminate as much of as possible. Those are the ones that can cause those female characteristics in men. Those are the ones that can lead to decreased fertility. Those are the ones that can lead to decreased libido and an overall unpredictable mood, to be completely honest. So how do we control those? Okay, we can control them with diet. We can control them with exercise. But it's a shot in the dark. See, it all comes out to balancing out our hormones in general. And when we're only looking at estrogen, it's very, very hard to direct exactly what we should be eating only to reduce estrogen. So that's why I want to talk about one particular vitamin that I think is really, really strong. And I'm talking about DIM. Maybe you've heard of it before. It's got a wide spectrum of properties. But basically, the most important benefit that we get from DIM, which is also known as methane, is the fact that it is super high in these components that are derived from indole-3-carbonyl, derived from cruciferous vegetables. And what they do is they help eradicate those 16 hydroxyestrones. They help eradicate the bad metabolites of estrogen. And you see why we want to pay attention to that is because when we have a better balance of good estrogens versus bad estrogens, it allows our body to flourish. It allows our body to be in that optimal state. And what that does for women is it increases the chances of fertility. It increases the chances of actually having good body composition. It increases the chances of having a positive mood state. But in men, it decreases the chances of fat accumulation. And it increases the production of testosterone, or at least the release of free testosterone. Increases libido, increases your mood. It does a lot of things. So I'm trying to change the game here. I don't want you to think of estrogen as bad. I want you to think of the bad estrogen as bad. And if we can increase that ratio of good to bad, we can do a lot more things. So testosterone, for example, certain parts of testosterone will bind to estrogen and they'll generally bind to the bad estrogen. So if we can cut out some of the bad estrogen, then by default, we free up some of that testosterone. So without ever having to increase our testosterone intake of any kind, whether it be exogenously or endogenously, we are actually able to increase the amount that's available for utilization. That free testosterone is what does everything in our bodies that we want it to do, especially as men. It's what gives us the male characteristics. It's what allows us to get muscle in the gym. It's what allows us to stay lean. It's what gives us a sex drive. It's what gives us that cool beard. Everything that we want. So we really have to pay attention to that. And when you look at how it's derived, it's derived from, again, that IC3, indol 3 carbonyl, you'd have to eat quite an amazing amount of veggies, of broccoli to get that. So if you want to get rid of that 16-hydroxyestrone, the bad estrogen metabolite, you might want to look at taking some DIM or eating copious amounts of cruciferous vegetables. But regardless, stop giving estrogen the bad rap. Okay, we need it. It's good for us. We need the balance. And if you pay attention to it, you're going to get the most out of your diet, you're going to get the most out of your workout, the most out of your mind. See you in the next video.